Why is that important? Because what it will do, it will cause you to focus. It will cause you to concentrate. When that other conversation is going on telling you what you cannot do, telling you all of the impossibilities and all of the obstacles, your concentrating will begin to create a larger vision within yourself and you start looking for and seeing some new opportunities. You start creating some openings for yourself. As you begin to read that every day, every day, day in and day out, that will make you focus. That will discipline your thinking. And you'll get all kind of creative ideas. As I talk to you right now, being involved in this immersion process, you're going to create some openings for yourself. You're going to get some ideas. You're going to feel your adrenaline flowing and you're going to think about something, some idea you had. You say, I want to go back and I'm going to look at that again from a different vantage point, not from the level of the problem of the obstacles that I encountered, but from a higher vantage point. Because what you will begin to see and to know as I talk to the higher consciousness within you, that you are powerful, that you are a miracle worker. And that inner conversation has conditioned you to believe that you are not. And as you begin to discover the truth of who you are, whatever challenge that you're facing in life, and if you're living, you're facing some challenge, you'll begin to know that you're powerful and that you're a miracle maker. So as you begin to write down exactly what it is that you want, read it every day. The next thing is, see yourself there. How will you feel once you get there? What will the experience be like for you? What will be different? What kind of person do you have to become in order to get there? Visualize yourself there, living the experience. I remember when I ran for state representative in Columbus, Ohio, and I had a lot of people telling me, and you got to watch not only the conversation within, but the conversation without. Telling me, Les, you can't possibly win. You can't do that. And I went down to the legislature, and I saw myself. I knew what I wanted. I saw myself in the chair. I pointed out the chair that I wanted. I used to go and sit up in the galleries and watch the legislative process. I used to go to the committee meetings and listen to legislation being introduced. I learned how to write legislation, how to amend legislation. I started thinking like a legislator. Got up every day dressing, thinking like that, selling myself on it, seeing myself in the legislature. Mr. Speaker, I'm the gentleman from the 29th House District. I'd like to introduce the bill. I went in the legislature, walked around. I had the experience of it. And when I ran and won against overwhelming odds, they were shocked. I won the election even before it was held because I was living it in my mind. You want to see yourself beyond your circumstances. You got a challenge, see yourself beyond your challenge. See yourself with the challenge already resolved. And knowing that all is well, seeing yourself in control and in charge of your destiny, being healthy and happy. The next thing is, it is important in the area of motivating yourself it's important to know why you're doing it because that mind will say why bother why go through all this this is too hard no throw it in the tower it's not worth it has it ever said that to you before here's how you can handle that here's how you override that write down five reasons why you deserve it why do you deserve what you want why you why do you deserve it? What meaning and value will it bring to your life? What's so different about you that you deserve your goal or this goal? And when you write down those five reasons, when you have some down moments and you're going to have them, when that conversation starts talking to you and it's going to talk to you, what you will do is you can pull that out and read it and it will build you up. It will be your rod and your staff to comfort you through some challenging moments because you're going to have some. Life will knock you between the eyes. It will catch you on the blind side, come out of nowhere, stuff you can't anticipate. That will knock the wind out of you. You want to give up. That's why it's important for you to work on yourself, listening to tapes, building yourself up, talking to yourself with power, feeling, and conviction, building yourself up day in and day out because it's coming. I guarantee you, Life is just waiting. Oh, he's doing good now, huh? Very good. I remember I had an experience. I was pursuing my dream. And that's why you have to work on yourself. You don't know what's going to happen. And I was telling people, 
I had this big rally I had to do was 5,000 people there. And I said, you must work on yourself. If you want a larger vision, you've got to empower yourself continuously because life will catch you on the blind side. And after I finished my speech, I got a rousing standing ovation. And I went and called the young lady that I was dating at the time. I said, hey, guess what? I said, they love me. I got a standing ovation. And they were chanting, we want the motivator. We want the motivator. I said, listen, we want the motivator. We want, do you hear? She said, yes, Les, I need to talk to you. I said, well, wait a minute. You're talking about tough. I was getting off and I'll be home soon. Les, I heard a voice in the background. Hurry up and tell him. <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> Les, um, you've been gone a lot and there's somebody else. What? And they came in. Les, come on, Mr. Motivator. They want you back out there. Wait a minute, hold a minute, hold a minute. What'd you say? I'm sorry, there's someone else. I heard the voice say, hang the phone up. Clump. I say, wait a minute. I say, hey, hey, Motivator, come on. They want you. Can't you hear them cheering? I say, oh, 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 okay. Oh, I say, I say, oh, when you're working on a larger vision, I say, you you got to really work on yourself. The light will catch you on the blind side. I said, you better be ready. And you better make sure you want it because it'll make you cry. And somebody said, the spirit is on him. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> I was talking till it started blinking the lights. They had to come pull me off, and I said, you got to have a larger vision. You make sure, wait a minute, you make sure you work on yourself. They said, come on, Mr. Brown, come on. Yeah. I went back to my hotel room, and loneliness and heartbreak was sitting on the bed, said, are you coming in now? <laughs> Do you have your larger vision now? <laughs> How's your positive attitude? <laughs> Say, get on in here. <laughs> Are you still breathing? Shut, shut up. You want your gold? No, I don't want this gold. No, I don't. <laughs> Life will wear you out. You'll be saying, no, I can't. And no, I won't. <laughs> you try to read it, can't see nothing through the tears. <laughs> I went plundering through the drawers in this hotel trying to find a Gideon Bible, anything, you know. I said, somebody, anybody help me. Yahweh, Yahweh, anybody. <laughs> Boy, I tell you, that's why you got to work on yourself. Because life will send you some curves you cannot anticipate. The next thing is that whatever you do, you want to develop technical mastery. You want to be the best at what you do. You want to master it. See, part of, of, of self-motivation is you've got to find something that gives you a strong sense of competence. Well, you become known for that. You develop a reputation of being good at doing that. You set some high personal standards for yourself. You're not competing with anybody else. You're just unfolding yourself to be the best person that you can be. That you want to give the best quality service that you can give because that is a statement about who you are. The other thing that's the key to self-motivation is recognize the fact that you're going to get into some slumps recognize the fact that you're going to encounter a great deal of failure in life. It goes with the territory. But in the face of that, you want to be relentless. When you want something, you can, don't expect everybody to say, oh, come on in, we've been, oh, you want this? Oh, great, we want to give this to you. You're such a nice person. You're doing it for your family, aren't you? Great. No, no, life isn't like that. No, many doors will be closed in your face. Many loans that you will want. And they say, no, you don't have enough collateral. You don't have enough credit. And most people will give up. But you've got to decide that I'm going to be fearless. I refuse to be denied. And I'm going to go all out. I'm going to be relentless. I don't care how many no's I encounter. I like something Isaiah Thomas said when he's getting ready for a basketball game. He said, I'm going to either shoot us in or shoot us out but I'm not going to not do anything. And that's the way to go. You can't make a basket unless you shoot the ball. 
You can't hit a home run unless you take a swing at it. Most people won't even take a swing. Well, I probably won't make it anyhow. That's the conversation within. They probably won't give it to me anyhow. If you want something, you've got to be relentless. You've got to decide, I deserve this and I'm going to have it. And you go all out to get it. That drives you. The next thing is that when you want something out of life, you've got to be willing to go into action. Don't wait around for things to be just right. Don't wait for things to be perfect. Don't wait for the ideal situation. It will never be ideal. There will always be a reason. Well, as soon as the children grow up, as soon as I pay my bills, as soon as I get my divorce, all kind, as soon as I get enough money together, do what you can, where you are with what you have, and never be satisfied. A lot of people never take a chance in life. They don't want to take any chances. They want the situation to be ideal. See, that's not walking by faith. That's walking by sight. If I can see it, I'll do it. No, 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 no. That's a lot of people say, if I can see it, I'll believe it. No, 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 no. If you believe it, you can see it. And don't be disturbed because no one else can see it. That's not unusual. That is ordinary. But because you want some different kind of results in your life, you've got to be willing to be unreasonable. If you want unreasonable results in your life, you've got to be willing to be unreasonable. Part of being unreasonable, you don't judge according to appearances. Part of being unreasonable, you can see it because you believe it. That's part of being unreasonable. Part of being unreasonable, you're like Paul who said, you must have the faith to call forth those things that be not as though they were. That's part of being unreasonable. Most people won't do that. Most people say, call me when you get it together. <laughs> then I'll support you. <laughs> the other thing is that one of the keys to self-motivation that empowers you is that you want to find a cause larger than yourself. Find something that you can contribute to. Find something that you can make a difference because you can. Part of what feeds your larger vision, part of what gives you a reason for being, part of what gives you your life is being able to give something back. Say, I can't afford to give anything. You can't afford not to give. Give your time. Give your talent. There's nothing just to go over and lick envelopes. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do, but I'm going over there. It's part of my tithing in the universe. Once you develop that, that special sense of mission, and that's what you develop when you're part of a larger cause than yourself, it drives you. You don't need an alarm clock to get up in the morning. You have special power. You'll go places and folk will like to be around you. They will know there's something different about you. When you go in, they'll say, hey, that's somebody important. I want to know who you are. I just want to be near you. That energy that you have, that consciousness that you will embody will affect everybody around you. The next thing is, is that you want to create a home court advantage for yourself. You've got to be aware of who you have around you. So you want to be selective. Have friends that will enable you to grow. I have friends that help me to grow spiritually. These are my spiritual friends. I talk spiritual stuff with them. I have some other friends who are just intellectual friends. They make me grow intellectually. They make me stretch. I have some professional friends. I'm a member of the National Speakers Association. I get together with other speakers and we learn from each other. And we grow from each other. I have other friends who are just social friends. All we do is just socialize together. We'll look at a basketball game together or go out dancing, but that's all we can do. We don't talk anything serious, nothing spiritual, nothing intellectual. That's not that kind of relationship. Nothing heavy up in here. 